Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast, coming to you live each and every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern with your hosts, Jeff Herb, John Samuelson, Sam Patterson, and Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and you are listening to the podcast that helps you learn how to use the latest in educational technology right from podcasters and app developers themselves. Today with me is my co-host, Sam Patterson, a dedicated educator from California. And tonight, we're going to be talking all about social media and how we're using our Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook pages and many more. We're even going to be demonstrating how to sign up for some of these popular popular social media accounts. So sit right back and uh, we're going to be having a great time as we are live here every single Sunday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time and you can find out much more information right here at TechEducatorPodcast.com where you can catch all of our great shows just like this one here. This last week was episode number 20. Tech Tools for the Summer was a great episode. We got a lot of awesome comments on it. Notice here, you can listen to our show audio only. You can watch it video. You can, of <laughs> course, check out all of our links, all of our recommendations. And, of course, we always love it when you leave us a comment. And over here on the right side of every single techeducatorpodcast.com page, you can follow our live schedule and download our podcast right here from iTunes. Lots of great stuff happening here at the Tech Educator Podcast. I want to bring on my co-host, Sam, the man Patterson. Sam, how are you tonight? I'm doing great, despite some intermittent power losses. It's actually been raining for about a day and a half here in the desert, and uh, you know we just don't know how to cope with that. I understand. I actually just landed today from the desert. I spent the last week out in Arizona, and I actually experienced the desert. I saw my first uh, set of... I'm going to say I saw my first set of cactuses, but uh, I know that people would, uh, would criticize that and call it cacti. It's, it's cacti, right? Right, it is cacti. I was I was really amazed. I actually tried to hug a cacti, cacti cactus, those big things. Um, they are very very impressive. We uh we were in Phoenix and then we were up in Flagstaff, and I spent Friday afternoon walking. Uh, I'm gonna say walking around the Grand Canyon, but I certainly didn't get that far. Uh, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? I've been to the Grand Canyon a couple of times and uh, really enjoyed it. Did you happen to stop at the Flintstones-themed RV park right at the outside of the Grand Canyon? We didn't stop. Um, actually, we passed it by twice. And, um, you know, you were mentioning things like rain. Well, we had a really wonderful time at the Grand Canyon. And when we left, we got about five minutes outside of the park and got nailed by this amazingly huge thunderstorm. And um, then we drove out of it. We had dinner in Flagstaff and got hit by it again. And then drove out to uh, where my aunt and uncle were live. And then we got nailed by it again. So it was kind of interesting that we got hit three times by the same thunderstorm. This amazing thing happened to me that I saw. Out in the distance was the dark thunderstorm clouds. And then we saw this sheet. And I said, what is this? Like It looked like sun rays, but it wasn't. It was dark. And my aunt and uncle are like, that's the rain coming down. And I've never experienced that where you can actually in the distance see the actual rain coming down. It was quite impressive. Yeah, that's one of the really neat things about the desert is you can usually see what's happening just over there in the weather. Um, we've had it so you can see that it's raining almost all around us, but not actually raining on us. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, when I was growing up in Illinois, if it was raining, it was raining on you, and you couldn't really see where it was raining somewhere else. But this was, this is pretty normal. We are using the hashtag Tech Educator, and if you uh, if you've ever been out to the uh, the desert and uh, are a fan of the Grand Canyon, we'd love to see it. We of course want to uh, welcome Craig and John, who are following tonight, as well as uh, looking over here, many others tonight on TeacherCast.tv. Um, I got to tell you, Sam, it was an amazing time out there. You're following, too, of course. So, yeah, it was absolutely an amazing time. And I um, want to give some props out to, to you and your buddy Waka out there. While I was out in uh, Scottsdale, um, spent some time and actually did my first major, major uh, keynote address where we talked all about being an authentic learner. And I actually had a chance to do a, ser a series of uh, presentations on Mystery Skype and uh, I actually brought Waka in for the... Uh... Hi, Waka. How are you? 
I'm great, Jeff. That was wonderful. Are all your friends there again? Uh, we had a great time, and I want to say, Waka, thank you so much for showing up. And uh, everybody loved the mystery Skype, and they also loved the, the video of authentic learning that you took part in. That was fun, but I was jealous of the kid's eye patch. <laughs> Well, it was it was it was great to have you there, and uh, yes, of course, uh, we we have a video that we popped up on uh, teachercast.net slash YouTube of what is an authentic learner, and we we basically did a three minute uh, snippet of what an authentic learner is, and uh, you had some good points about authentic learning, didn't you, Walker? I think so. You know, it's important to get kids doing things that connect with the real world. It gives them an opportunity to figure things out, which is also known as learning. Learning is certainly something that's important. Uh, have you learned anything in the last couple of days, Walker? Uh, when it rains, the earth gets wet. And I think that's like half of the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. So. That's something. That's that's wonderful. Um, now, let, let me talk back to Sam for a second here. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Waka Patui, everybody. Sam? Yes. Oh, well, well, hold on. Twitching cameras? Where'd it go? You're giving me more things to edit. There we are. So, so that I'm was back. my Sorry. time out in uh, in Flagstaff yes. and in Scottsdale. I gotta tell you, Arizona's a really nice place. You 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 get into the desert and you see these mountains. And I asked a stupid question I, twice. In fact, I, I said, "Are these part of the Rocky Mountains?" And they all laughed at me like I didn't know my geography. But it was out west, and they're big mountains. Why not ask the question, right? But yeah, I, yeah, yeah, not quite. Not quite the Rockies, though, huh? I didn't know where the Rockies ended. What What were the name of the mountains you were near? Did they tell you that? I, I saw Camelback Mountain, which is right by the Phoenix Airport. And I also, we, we left and saw these the Red Rocks of Sedona, which were, they were red, in fact. Red? Yeah, all over. It was like a newspaper. Um, they were red all over. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, Every, everybody's like, "Wait, I tuned in for a social media show, and they're talking about <laughs> newspapers." No. Yes, um, you can telegraph us at dot dot dash <laughs> dash 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 dot. We had a good time, and uh, so we're back and looking forward. I'm actually going to be flying out on Tuesday, a uh, Wednesday. Actually, I got to remember that, so I'm not at the airport a day early, uh, <clears throat> John. Um, I'm flying out to Indiana to go to the uh, Greater Clark County Conference Convention and Media Expo. I think it's called out there, um, where I'm going to be doing a big speech on how to use Google presentations, and also going to be doing some broadcasting out there. So. Another busy week for us here, and I'll have a lot more to talk about uh, next week. Maybe I'll do newspapers part two. Uh, how are things over at Petui? Uh, things at Petui are good. This week we're, uh, we're going to be doing an experiment on Petui. I'm trying to put together an encore chat, which is to say um, I had some conflicts come up, and instead of arranging for someone else to take the chat over, I'm trying to just program a bunch of archive links into TweetDeck ahead of time so that during the standard Patui time it's going to be a share of our 32 previous chats and videos and whatnot. I, I think so I saw that on like, I, I saw that today when I was reprogramming my time zone I saw standard Patui time. Yes, yes, standard Patui time. We like to keep it in the standard Patui time even when we can't be there. Hmm. I keep having flashbacks to like sitcoms during the writer's strike where there's just a bunch of dream sequences and clip together old shows. <laughs> Thank you so much, Craig, for uh, posting some of these videos out there. He just posted my authentic learning video, so check that out. Sam, tonight we're talking all about social media. And why are educators using social media? And we're also going to be discussing things like Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Google+. Why would we want to sign up for some of these, all of these? And I think we're just going to do a round robin. And I know we're going to try to sign some of these up. In fact, I'm, I'm hoping that by the time um, we're finished today, Waka is the most connected edu puppet in the world. So we'll see where we go from there. Um, I'm going to see if I can yeah. make you switch cameras as many times as I'm switching cameras tonight. So, social media. Um, let me throw the question at you. Why do educators need to be on social media? 
it's a really good question. And Thank you. And I think before last year's ISTE conference, uh, it was a question that was totally unanswered for me. Um, I didn't really understand how social media could be used for teachers. And I thought that Twitter was just something you use to promote your own blog and didn't really get the community aspect of it. But I think that in a lot of ways, social media can serve a couple of functions. One of the key functions is as a way to help teachers have ongoing community. So, you know, as teachers, we often work fairly alone in our classrooms, just getting things done. And we don't, and we view like going to meetings to talk to people as taking time away from what we're doing. But social media can actually allow us to connect with like-minded educators, you know, pretty much wherever we are, whenever we have time. So the whole community aspect is important. That also kind of leads to the, uh, the curation aspect. So if I'm looking for resources online and I'm using social media to do it and I'm interacting with other teachers in a personal learning network on social media, it can help me find better resources much more quickly because someone else has looked at them and they say, here, try this site, it's good, which will save me time because I'm not you know, trying to figure out everything else. And you know, I think the other reason that teachers need to be on social media is the puppets. I, I completely agree. We actually have some comments here. I want to uh, say hello to Benjamin and Craig out there. And uh, Benjamin is saying that teachers are using social media to connect and build relationships. And uh, Craig here is also saying that it was an awesome authentic learning conference and Waka brought the house down. So I thought that was really cool. Um, Benjamin here is also saying that it's more about building relationships. Um, it, it really is about just reaching out and connecting with other people. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? Oh, definitely. I can't believe the number of people I've connected with uh, since I've started really actively seeking out, out those connections. And I'll, I'll, I do that a lot through Twitter chats where I'll meet people on a Twitter chat and then I'll kind of have a sustained conversation with them. And, you know, once you get to know someone and you begin talking to them and you take an interest in what they're doing, it's, you know, amazing how present they can be for you. I've learned so much from other teachers on Twitter um, over the past year just by taking an interest in what they're doing, reading their blog, sharing what I'm doing, and, you know, building that relationship. Now, when we talk about social media, we're really talking mostly about Twitter. When we say connected educator, we're talking about educators who are reaching out through Twitter. But I want to focus not necessarily on Twitter today, we'll get to it, but let's talk about some of the other ones. The question that actually was asked to me the most this past week at the Authentic Learning Conference was about LinkedIn. Why would a teacher want to have a LinkedIn account? And many teachers say, well, they set one up, but they haven't looked at it in the last five years. Do you have a LinkedIn account? And if so, what do you do with it? I do have a LinkedIn account. And um, let me do a screen share here. Uh, so my LinkedIn account I set up initially because I was doing the social media work and I thought you know gosh I should have a LinkedIn account and I followed pretty much all of their suggestions about how to create a good profile and I fed my um, I fed my resume into it and I keep it updated with the different things I'm doing um, and what I do with it, occasionally I share the profile with people who are saying, you know, where can I find out more about you and your experience? Um, I don't necessarily want to send people, everyone that asks that question, my paper resume. Um, pa because paper? It's, We're back to talking yeah, about right. paper? Yeah, right, trying to avoid it. Um, but the but LinkedIn allows me to share that with other people. As far as community, um, I've actually had a, a great, I was surprised by the great response I had connecting with teach, uh, parents at my school by way of LinkedIn. I tried not to get too much school stuff into my Facebook social media. And honestly, most parents and teachers find my Twitter social media completely overwhelming. But LinkedIn is kind of a nice third space where I can share that, 
that information with the parents and in turn I can see some more of their information um, which can kind of help contextualize some things. I also occasionally share articles and links and that kind of thing on LinkedIn because you can post updates on LinkedIn similar to Twitter but the rules of engagement are a bit different. Now the neat part about LinkedIn I would say is that it not only is a social business slash professional account, it's actually a program that is designed to work with other resume builders. Um, nothing, unfortunately, because I'm still going through jet lag, nothing right now is hitting me as to the, some of these other ones. But if you type in any of these social resume type um, websites out there, they will actually log into your LinkedIn account if you choose that pull all of your information and make them. I think one's called My Visual Resume or Visual Resumes. Maybe somebody out there who's listening to this uh, can, can help me out with that. Um, but it's like, it's like Visual Resumes. But basically, they will take your LinkedIn resume, which even though that's digital, is kind of in the boring looking way, and they'll actually make a visual looking resume with colors and arcs. And it's a really, really neat way of showing off your resume. And you kind of look back and go, okay, here's a, here's a history of my life. And here's a little chunk. And here's a little chunk. And here's a little chunk. Uh, you're pulling it up. Uh, uh, visual.ly. Yeah, so this is there called visual.ly. Uh, my visual LinkedIn resume. Uh, should, we, should we click through it and see what it does? Sure. I think I might even have okay. one of those on there somewhere. All right, I'm going to click start a project with this designer, I think. No. I'm going to click, what am I going to do here? Um, I don't know. Sign up for our newsletter? That's not what I want to do. We don't want to show people that, no. Um, I'm wondering what happens if you go to visual.ly slash... Sign up. There you go. These are great tools to, to share with people, and most of these things have embeddable... Um, a, a, APIs with them so you can actually create a visual resume and paste it right into your normal website. Now, uh, Ben's saying here, I wonder if LinkedIn is a better place to show off a resume and less about interaction. Um, I will tell you, I have all of my blog posts from all of the TeacherCast segments going into LinkedIn. I get a lot of uh, favorites there. I get a lot of people commenting on them. I got a lot of people sharing things, but it's just a different animal than Twitter. Um, Yes, I'm one of those people that you set it and forget it. You put in all your where you are on LinkedIn, and then you just kind of forget about it. Um, but it is a, it is less about interaction. It really is about, you know, just put your resume up, put it in one spot. It actually can generate a PDF resume, Sam. So that way, if you ever did need to give somebody a printed version of your resume, you didn't have to then put it into Word and mess around with it. It actually makes it look really nice there. And I think they even have a few different templates really so it's now, a really really I, neat uh professional place to be do they have groups yes is there a connected educator group and uh and a music teacher group and all of those different things um yes so there's a lot of different things in there um annabelle just chimed in and says you can use visify.com or visual.me to create visual resumes so we're gonna make sure that we have this on our um on our website under our show notes which this will be techeducatorpodcast.com slash 21 so for those of you playing the home game uh techeducatorpodcast.com slash 21 uh, michael here yeah, is saying I... sam he uses linkedin for interest groups and their email digests so there are some social things and i know right now linkedin is they're behind the game i mean their stock is is down i'll be honest with you um, but they're trying right now. They're, they're trying to catch up because Twitter and Facebook and even Google Plus are, are much, much, much dominating the scene right now. Well, the, uh, the let's try this on the fly visual resume builder. I think we'll go after one of those other two that we're going to put in the show notes instead. Sure. Uh, not impressed with what's going on here. There's a few of them. Um, I'll show you a few more as, we, as the show goes. Uh, let's see, John is writing here, any social media platform that your students are using or a social media platform for your kids? Let's, let's switch away from LinkedIn for a little bit, Sam. Any social media platforms for your kids? Uh, my students spend a lot of time on Facebook. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and some of them spend some time on Twitter, but it seems like one of the most prominent ones for the kids are like Facebook and uh, Instagram. Well, let's let's focus on Facebook for a couple minutes. Most people have a Facebook profile page, right? But I always recommend to teachers when they ask that if they're going to do a classroom, they create a page off of their profile. I, I always say never friend your your students. But um, right. I, I have a John Doe type account that off of that I have a Facebook page and that's what I've built our school district Facebook fan page on. Um, two reasons for that. Number one, you don't own the page just in case you decide to sever ties with your, with your job. And number two, um, the school district can then build an identity off of that. And, and I would say the same thing kind of applies for Google+. Plus. Um, but a little bit different. Google Plus runs just slightly different than, than what Facebook does. Um, what do you think about Facebook? Should uh, The obvious question here, should students friend their kids? And uh, how would you as an educator set up a student relationship friendly um, profile? Well, I think that um, basically on when I first got into social media and education, it I actually set up a um, MySpace page, mm -hmm. and that was fairly new at the time. Um, and it was because all of the kids were on MySpace, and I was trying to find a space to make the to put the notes for class, so we could all like if we were taking notes in class, we could all share them in the same space. Mm -hmm. um, that was at a school that was not ready to have social media as part of the learning profile and I was actually told to shut that down um, and then I was off of connected education for a couple of years until I ended up moving schools the for Facebook you know I can see setting up a class page and having students like that page because it allows you to uh, post information where they can get it I don't really think that friending your students on Facebook is necessarily a great idea because that gives you a lot more information um, than you may want to have about your students or that you may be prepared to deal with at times when you're not at school. So, you know, I think that in general, it's pretty good to set up some boundaries to those relationships. Um, it's always good to be somewhat aware of what your students are doing on social media and to talk to them about digital citizenship, but especially in situations where teachers are mandated reporters. Uh, you want to make sure that when they're telling you information, it's because they're telling you information instead of just posting it on their Facebook and suddenly you're in some sort of moral quandary about whether or not you have to call so-and-so's parents about the fact that they're in this picture with this bottle of beer. Um, you know, high school problems. I, I think those are all good points. I want to bring up here a visual. Um, I'm currently working with a school district uh, to recreate their social media profiles. And so I wanted to bring up a small example here. This is for the Lower Alloways Creek School District in New Jersey. And um, this is the Facebook page that we're working on. Now, there's not much here yet because, you know, as school hasn't started, but we've been posting some photos. They've just put a new wireless. We're sharing the new logo, a little bit of the new website. Here's a new library that they put in. So it's a good way to be community active. And for everybody who says, you know, well, why should schools be on Facebook? The answer I always find is because that's where the community is. You know, yes, I know we, we evangelize for Twitter constantly, but if your community isn't on Twitter, why are you trying to advertise there? Um, I think it's, certainly it's really about connecting with your audience. Right. So and, yeah, if and if we're, I'm a school, yeah. I mean, absolutely. we you know when I when I talk about things, I always try to push them to Twitter because I think it's just an easier uh, atmosphere and you know all the different reasons why we're on Twitter and using it and these conversations and shows and stuff but if your if your community uses Facebook like it uses water do something there I mean I certainly wouldn't uh, yes I'm setting up a Google Plus page for this school district but I'm not going to be focusing on advertising everything there because the world doesn't revolve around that and so for this you know we've been heavy on Twitter and I think we have a grand total of six followers. But as you saw there, we have 69 likes on this Facebook page. So, you know, you know, for a page that's been up for three or four weeks and the school district is a month and a half away from starting, 
we're doing pretty good on this. Um, you know, right now I'm working on the website and it'll be uh, released hopefully in the next month or so. But, but I would definitely recommend setting up a page, um, not a post. So a really good question that just came in from Michael is, does your school receive negative Facebook comments? And if so, how do you handle it? I make sure that all of my comments are approved. And in fact, even when setting up the, the YouTube account, I lock everything down for a school. Um, TeacherCast, I will say all of the comments have to be approved on YouTube, let's just say, before going out. But I make sure that everything under a school district is always set to no comments. It's just so much easier. Um, I'm not looking to interact with my community. I'm looking to give them news. I'm looking to tell them what the calendar is. I'm looking to tell them when we have a snow day. Uh, Sam, a snow day is when the snow comes down so much that we can't have school that day because of the buses. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, desert humor right there. And so... Right there. Uh, de definitely, I would make sure that everything's approved. Now, what does it mean to have an approved comment? That means that somebody has to be in charge of approving the comments, which can get a you little bit... You gotta have a moderator. Which, which can get very sticky, and, you know, let's just say that I, I, as a community member, leave a comment on something, and then three months goes by, and I don't see it. Well, then I get a, to be a really upset parent. If I just leave it as no comments, then nobody gets their feelings hurt. So it's just easier now, to have a one-way communication. To clarify, Jeff, is it possible to set Facebook comments to approvable by moderation? Or is that just kind of an on and off kind of thing? Um, good question. I, someone's also asking, why am I looking over here? And that's just so we know, that's because I'm actually running four different computers when I do this. So if you see me looking on either way for a long period of time, it's not that I'm ignoring Sam again. Um, you know, that's a good question about Facebook. I don't know. I know Again, I know for Google and for YouTube, I'm setting everything up for approved. But I don't remember what we did for Facebook. I, it's one of those we set it up and I haven't really gotten in there to tweak. In fact, if you go to the, the, the Twitter address we set up for the school, it's still the old logo and the old colors. I haven't even touched those yet. So um, maybe we can answer that on another time or maybe somebody out there can answer that. We've got quite a few people watching right now. And if you're following us using the hashtag Tech Educator, like uh, Michael, Craig, Ben, and Annabelle and others are, uh, we would love to know a little bit more about Facebook comments if you have anything there. If you want to put any links on the uh, hashtag, uh, Sam and I will, of course, uh, put those in the show notes. TechEducatorPodcast.com slash 21. It looks like you actually can moderate comments. I'll uh, throw that link out onto the hashtag. I, I would I would suspect that you can. I mean, it's all under the privacy stuff, right? Um, now, obviously, pages work different than profiles. You're not friending somebody. They're liking you. So things do work a little bit differently. Um, I think with, with liking, you can only have up to 5,000 likes, I think, or something like that. Maybe I'm getting my pages and my posts set up. Ah, Michael yeah. is doing very, very good tonight with some comments. Thank you so much, Michael, for watching the show. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, lots of good stuff there. So um, we will certainly, of course, link to everything here again, techeducatorpodcast.com slash 21. So, Sam, one of the other things that we were talking about is... Someone's on my front yard. So, some of the, one of the other things we were talking about are the secondary social media sites, things like Pinterest. Do teachers need to do mm -hmm. Pinterest? It's it's it, it's social, but it's digital curation. It's kind of those hybrid things, whereas things like Twitter, Facebook are conversational social. What are your thoughts on Pinterest and like sites, like you know EduClipper and stuff like that? Do we need them or do we want them, and what are they good for? Well, what I've seen, the best uses of Pinterest and EduClipper and those kinds of things really help people share stuff, where I think Twitter's much more about developing conversation and relationships. Pinterest is more, I found this site, I found this site, I found this site, and the way they set it up is kind of that visual, high-impact, bunch of tiny little uh, not not even tiny, kind of mid mid size uh, 
thumbnails that help you see what the site looks like or a key image from the site. And it's a good way to kind of organize resources. In fact, I see a bunch of people who share Pinterest links on Twitter to kind of take the resources that they've curated onto their Pinterest page. Maybe they have a page that's all about kindergarten resources, another page that's all about music education, and another page that's all about shoes. They will share those into the relevant communities using another social media. So, you know, I think that these kind of tools that help teachers share resources directly with other teachers can be great because as we get further and further into education and further into a social media enabled world, the file cabinet becomes less relevant. You know, I may have a great file cabinet, but what's really important is can I find exactly what I want when I want to find it? And is it the best resource available? And do my students have access to it? So if we're finding online resources, it's a lot easier to make sure that our students have access to them. Um, because if I have the world's greatest handout in my filing cabinet, I still have three or four steps to take where I scan it in, I post it, and then I share it before that's available to the students in my class. But if I find a like resource on a Pinterest page or something like EduClipper, then that's something that I can point my students directly there. And even when it comes time to do like research and that kind of thing, if I want to do uh, some pre-work with research and have my students uh, search a selection of sites, I can set up a Pinterest board or an EduClipper space or a uh, Padlet space that's all focused on those sites, that lists all of those sites. Instead of just a bunch of links with descriptions that I've written, it's you know key images and search descriptions that are pulled directly from the site. So if you're looking to kind of pre-curate resources for yourself, for other teachers, or for your students, these kinds of sites can be really handy. Now, one of the things that I find handy in a site that is social but curatable, again, is that ability to embed stuff. And I know, I think it was either last week or the week before, um, Adam had announced that EduClipper is now embeddable. So you can actually create an, an EduClipper board and then embed that onto your website. And, you know, what? this is one of the things we talked about last week in Phoenix. It's so much easier to tell your kids to go to your website that you can then find the tools for rather than going to pinterest.com slash user slash teachercast slash uh, you know, Every one eight of those slash 25. Yeah. is a thousands opportunities for distraction. Yes, the, the, the one you know. thing that I cringe at, and I know how many teachers out there have done this, they have a 30 character thing, they put it on the board and then tell everybody in the audience, okay, go to this page, oh, by the way, it's case sensitive, and, and you're getting people on their phone doing a 30 character hyphen slash squiggly slash backwards question mark slash what are we doing, people? And, you know, maybe maybe one day uh, when, when John and Jeff are back here, we'll do a whole segment on pretty links and why pretty links are important. And, um, you know, it's just so much easier to go to teachercast.net slash YouTube than to go to youtube.com slash user slash teachercast slash page slash I don't know. It's just so much easier to send your students, especially the younger ones, but even the older ones, to a certain spot. Um, well, especially if they know that spot already. Like if yes. I'm, if we're, you know, we use a LMS at school, a learning management system. The one we used was Schoology, but this will work with just about any of them. If I can take that one link, put it there and say, okay, go there, then great. Or if I can use a curation tool like Live Binders, where it can be just the English ninth grade Live Binder, and every time I have a link I want them to go to, I just add a tab in Live Binders. They know where to go. They've got it. Once they've been there two or three times, their browser even remembers it. And, and, and things like that are so important. I mean, of course, we've already talked a little bit about Live Binders. I know we did a segment on one of our shows about Edmodo. Um, all these little different uh, educational social media sites, and, and we'll hit it again on, on another show. But these are so important to set up for your students if you're trying to build a community. And, you know, again, we, we talked about that on another show. Tonight we're just focusing on the social media sites. People here are popping out a lot of good ones here. Uh, Benjamin says he likes to curate things using using Scoop It. 
Um, people here say they're using Clayco, which is a good site. Um, hope it still is around in a little bit. Um, people are using Evernote. Uh, Annabelle is sending out his Pinterest page. Guys, by the way, if you're out there, we love having you guys join us. We like this being an, a, uh, an educational, interactive show. Of course, we're using the Tech Educator Podcast. Um, dot com is the website and tech educators the hashtag we actually had a question out there Sam of how do we get a chance to see this later um, you can of course subscribe to us by going to tech educator podcast dot com slash iTunes um, again we're talking about things like pretty links but to, to use a pretty link to, to tell everybody to go to tech educator podcast dot com slash iTunes you can of course download all 21 of our audio podcasts and if you'd like to, to subscribe to the video, that's techeducatorpodcast.com slash YouTube, which actually takes you to our TeacherCast uh, YouTube site where you can subscribe to this and all of my other great uh, YouTube videos from TeacherCast. So please check us out. Please subscribe. We love having an audience each and every week as we have quite a few visitors today. Um, Annabelle is saying here that EduClipper is one of the easiest and safest ways to share educational content. I couldn't agree more. We're actually in the process, uh, Sam. Um, John and I talked last week after off camera and talked about setting up an EduClipper board for Tech Educator Podcast since we're sharing all these different links for people. Do you, uh, do John, you have a... John is like a master of boards, I uh, swear. He's, he, he's he, great. Are you he, saying he's a board person? I, I'm saying that if you hang around him long <laughs> enough, there ends up being a board. That's it. Um, do we want to do a walkthrough of EduClipper? I would to, love to do, do a like walkthrough of Edu. I, I I would love to do a visual walkthrough of EduClipper. Excellent. So what I've got on the screen here is uh, their first page. We're going to click create account, and I am going to sign in as an educator. Oh, that's a great graphic. Um, and I'm going to create Waka Patui as the username. We'll just use Waka as the username. Hopefully no one else has taken it, right? Now, did you know uh, Jeff, that when you're signing up, let's say, I know I've got another EduClipper account and I think it's attached to the same email, but if you just drop an extra period before the at sign, it'll treat it like a different email and the, and the uh, mail will still get to you? I heard that. Um, who was telling me that the other day? Um, I don't know who was telling me that. Maybe, I don't want to name drop. Um, I did know that actually, but that is a really neat thing that, that uh, Google offers. Say that one more time to us. If you're using your email address for multiple um, for multiple, let's say you want to set up multiple accounts on the same site, you can use the same Google address. Just put a period in the first half of your address. Like my address is essaywriting at gmail.com. I can put it ess dot a y writing at gmail.com and that will treat it differently. The program will think it's a different address than E-S-S-A-Y dot writing. And that's because Gmail does not understand what dots are. They'll just, they're just looking at the, the English characters. Apparently. Which, which is amazing, which is a, a great tool for someone who doesn't want to set up five different Gmail addresses for, uh, for one thing. So that's right. how easy now, it was to, to, to do an EduClipper, right? Right, so it just told me that I have an email verifying, so I'm going to click the verify email. And now I have this beautiful white screen, just pregnant with the possibilities. Excuse me? Hmm? No, oh, nothing. Yes. Uh, and now I'm welcome. Okay, we're going to go ahead and create a profile. Uh, first thing I like to do is add a image. I'm, I'm because... sorry, just the screen of welcome Waka, we're happy you're here. Adam, what are you doing? <laughs> well, you know, you set these things up and you never really know what they're going to do, right? He thinks he's happy I'm there. We'll see. <laughs> so now we've got that. Uh, now remember, we're doing this uh, audio and... too, so walk us through. Uh, yeah, Waka is through what you're doing right now. Oh boy! Uh, that's really funny. 
So I'm gonna enter. I'm just gonna take over here. I am the head <laughs> edu puppet of Patui, looking forward to learning and sharing. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and promote himself to doctor. <laughs> Uh, subjects, art, career, ESL, foreign language, health, definitely health, library research, math, music, physical education, science, obviously not the hands-on science, right? What? You're going to start with the hand jokes now, too? Uh, social study, special educator, and technology. That's, that's good. We'll save that data. And now we're going to go to Waka's quick board. We've got the edu clip board. Drag edu clip here and clip to your new board. Or you can go to. So now that I've got this set up, how do I do something cool with it? Let's go to edu clipboards. Maybe? No. The one thing I love about Edger Clipper is that it is completely clean to use. Um, I noticed playing with some of these other, pin, I'm going to say pin board type things, but not necessarily Pinterest, but it's it's very cluttered. And everything that's gotten, uh, that you know, you've done here so far, Sam, is very clean looking and uh, responsive. So no matter how your browser changes, so does the screen. Right. And so now we've walked through to the Edu Clips area where uh, apparently there's all kinds of things here and I have if I look at this link I have the choice to reclip it to share it to like it to comment on it or to flag it now flagging I'm sure is about you know whether or not it's appropriate so let's look for something here let's see if they have that really cool blooms v 2.0 here Maybe that's too specific. Let's look for music and history. Live okay, TV. For music. Is this only searching what's on your board and that's why it's not popping up? It says it's searching everything. Because there's my stuff here, and I don't have any stuff. There we go. Music. Excellent. Nice, healthy board on music. So here we've got sounds from outer space. <laughs> uh, I love... Are you watching the board here? Craig is saying, I wonder how Waka Patui is checking off the boxes. He has no hands. Very, very carefully. With his, He's using a connect with his nose. He's yes. got one of those connects things. There's a lot of bobbing and weaving involved. Nice. Lots of resources there. Lots of resources. So let's take a look at this clip. Okay, speed note reading. Um doesn't really tell me much, but a fr fresh approach to mallet percussion. Okay, that sounds interesting. And there's, once we go to that one, we can see other things that those people have shared here. So basically, as I look for different resources, let's just put puppets in. Come on, put something interesting in there. Okay, let's see if there's any edu clips for puppets. Thanks, Walker. Please. I was falling asleep over here, Jeff. Famous puppets and puppeteers, puppets around the world. Now here's something, Tracy uh, is the only person that's popped up here, and she's got two clips for puppets. So that tells me that Tracy is really somebody that Waka should follow. Yeah, follow her. 
And she writes, she's got something about blogging there too, and digital citizenship and archaeologist tools. Wow, that seems really interesting. Uh, there's a re- so, there's a request here, uh, Sam, that Walken needs to get Google glasses. He, you know, there's a picture somewhere. Uh, I'll have to find it of Walker wearing JD Ferry's Google Glass, uh, which seems like they would work out well. But Je- Jeff, he doesn't have any ears. I don't know how the glasses would stay on. I think you need to do some more sewing. <laughs> I, I think that definitely. I'm, may I'm be, sorry. Go, maybe the truth. Go to a puppet geneticist. That's what I mean. Oh, that sounds that sounds intense. Puppet genetics. <laughs> so you, you can see that. that Basically, by searching for something I was interested in, I found Tracy's boards. And she not only has a couple things about puppets, but she also has a bunch of other stuff about archaeology and blogging and sharing and Punch and Judy and how to do puppets and puppet builder. So, you know, there's a lot of great stuff here. So we're going to reclip that and we're going to just say... Uh, we're going to create a new edu clipboard and we're going to call that puppets. And we're going to clip it. So that is definitely a really easy way to find resources, but also to find other people. I mean, it's pretty clear that, you know, resources are very easily linked to people. And if you find a couple resources by the same person, then, you know, that's somebody that you want to keep in your feed so that you can see what else they're sharing. So in wrapping up social media here, because I know we're running a bit on time here, Sam, why don't you pop up your, uh, your, your, your face again here. I, I think you can certainly say that, you know, is there a place for social media for all educators? Yes. I certainly think that there's, a, a, you know, you need to figure out what type of social media works for you. Are you going to have something for your class for curation? Are you going to have something for your class for socialness? And of course, there's great tools for you. I mean, I, we didn't even hit uh, Twitter. Obviously, we've hit it on other shows and we certainly will again. Um, but yeah, I know people are out there asking about watching this show. Uh, we'll, can we talk, we'll talk about that a little bit after the show's over here. Um, but thanks, Ben and Craig. Um, you know, what, what are you, what's your final verdict here? Well, if you had to tell an educator to sign up for one social media account or one kind of curation account, what would you do? Um, it would totally be Twitter, just because the number of connections you can make and the kind of the return on the time that you put into it is really astounding for Twitter. I mean, I've been on LinkedIn for like two and a half, three years. I have 350 connections on there. I've been on Google plus for about six or seven months and I have about 350 connections on there. Whereas I have 2,600 some teachers I follow on Twitter. Um, and every day when I look at my Twitter feed, there's always good ideas there. The number of good ideas I get from Twitter is limited by the amount of time I have to read it. Mm-hmm. So I think Twitter is definitely, if you're going to go with one, that's the way to go. And from there, you can see what other people are using and decide which other ones you want to put time into. There's one more website that I'd like to open up to the, to the public here, and that is about.me. Now, about.me is a is a front page. It's a home page, uh, front door as they would call it, which is really a portal. And let me pull up my front uh, my my about.me. It's about.me slash Jeff Bradbury, and you'll see here that I have a picture of myself that I'm working on changing. Um, and then here's my name. It tells you a little bit about what I do, and then there's my little bio paragraph, and then right underneath of it is links to all of my social media sites. And then links to things like TeacherCast, the TechEducatorPodcast.com, and then my personal homepage. Now, by going to about.me slash Jeff Bradbury, you have access to all of my information. So people always ask, you know, what do I give out? What do I put on my business card? And I usually just tell people to go and open up an about.me page. In fact, what I'm going to show off here is my official homepage, which is jeffbradbury.me, and I've actually made it look like, it's a WordPress site actually, but I've actually made it into an about.me themed page. 
Um, so you can see here again, it's got my picture, it's got my bio, it's got some stuff. I can click on the resume and it kind of flies around. Here's, here's a visual resume. Here's a portfolio page of things that I've done. So you can see how I've taken this concept of about.me and really made it into a um, personal website. Here's my contact page, tells you where I do all my presenting. And then here I actually made a visual uh, CV which looks like a one-page website, which is basically what I was looking for. So lots of different things that you can do just by using different social media sites. I always say social media means two things. It means people communicating with each other, like, you know, I'm reaching out to Sam, we're having a communication, but it also like, it, uh, it also means websites connecting to each other. So again, the about.me is connecting multiple websites and putting them all in one spot. Or EduClipper is about taking one website and clipping a whole bunch of different resources to it. So, uh, ooh, lots of stuff here. Benjamin is popping out his about.me page. Annabelle is popping out his about.me page. Um, lots of great stuff happening here. Sam, are you an about.me person? Does Waka have an about.me page? Sam, your mic is dead. I have an about.me page, but it's not done. Um, I, I set one up kind of halfway at some point, and that's one of those many things on the to-do list that I need to get back to. Um, but I think I hope by looking at Annabelle's and Benjamin's and looking at yours again, um, and there's a number of educators out there that are making awesome use of about.me mm -hmm. that I get inspired to catch up with that. Yeah. Um, it, it really is a nice way to put everything together. Again, you know, what is that one thing on their business card? So many people, and, and you know, Sam, what I would suggest to you and to anybody else is if you're buying sampatui.com, let's say, and that's the domain name you want to put on your business card, that should forward to your about.me page or your other, you know, whatever that front door is. Don't have it forwarded to a Twitter account or don't have it forwarded to a Facebook page, but by putting it towards a front door that you can put everything doing there, that's really good. Um, Craig says here, I was thinking about doing a student project where they make resumes as the first week school activity. Great idea. My suggestion for that would be to do it either on a Google Doc where everybody can work together or they can do it on a Google presentation, Craig. I would even go a step farther, and I'm not sure what you teach, but let's say you're a social studies teacher, don't do your own resume, maybe do the resume for George Washington. Maybe you're, you know, that's a good project, is do George Washington's resume, that way they have to look up who he was, where he lived, what he did, what color his white horse was, and they really get a chance to, uh, to put together something special there. So lots of great things. Um, Annabelle just popped out his about.me page. Lots of really good interactivity tonight uh, on the Tech Educator hashtag, Sam. Definitely. Really lively tonight. It's been great. I think this is one of our uh, most liveliest bunches. I see Jerry is also uh, tweeting us out. Uh, welcome back, uh, great library teacher, Jerry. Hi, Lisa. How are you today? Good to see you. So lots of great interactivity there. Um, Sam, you know, because it has been so interactive, could we put the Storify up on this one as well? Would you be able to handle that? Yeah, yeah, I'll get that done. So here's what no we'll worries. do. If you go All over right. to, and let me pull this up for the viewing audience and certainly for the audio audience. If you go over to techeducatorpodcast.com slash 21. Now, the page isn't there. We do the links later. I usually have the posts up by about 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. But techeducatorpodcast.com slash 21. We'll have the Storify. We'll have the audio. And, of course, we'll have the visuals for tonight. And um, we will make sure that you guys have all this great information and, uh, you know, like I said, we do this every single Sunday night live at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central. And as I found out this week, 4 o'clock Arizona. Um, Sam, do you have anything that you want to talk about in closing as we go forward here? Uh, no, I mean, I think that we've had a lot of great discussion about social media and how it can be used and why it's valuable. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to... Uh, what we're going to be able to do from this point on. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if social media is at this stage now, what's it going to look like in two years? I think, you know, 
what was it Mike or Craig? I forget who said it, but brings up a good point. Maybe we can devote a show one of these days to social media for the students and different projects that we can do. People kind of like that idea with George Washington. Oh, by the way, one o'clock Hawaii time. One o'clock Hawaii time. So lots of great stuff. And I believe we're eight hours ahead. You are eight hours ahead of England time. So do the math on that one. I think that means it's uh, 1600, right? Because it's eight o'clock now and you add eight, that's 1600, right? That sounds right to me. I don't know. But um, we will certainly do that. Uh, Sam, what's going on this week in the world of Pitui? Tell us again what, uh, where we can find the Pitui Network. The Pitui Network is at Pitui.org, and on Tuesdays at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern, we are at hashtag Pitui. That's the pedagogy and technology used in education chat. This week, we are bringing you a best of Pitui chat that will basically be more of a uh, tweet stream than a chat. Uh, whoever shows up is free to chat, but I will actually be in absentia and we're sending out links to our archives and the different video podcasts that we've done connected with Patui. Uh, what time zone is Abstentia in? Uh, I don't know, and that's why I can't tweet from there. <laughs> very, very nice. Um, what's, uh, what's, what's Waka got going this week? Is Waka going to be doing a about.me page? I think the world would what? like to see a Waka dot, uh, about.me slash Waka. That is possible. Walk is getting ready for a big professional development at Ooh. the end of the month. Is he keynoting? On the, he, he is keynoting. They don't know it yet, of course, <laughs> but he will be one of the key speakers at the Rockstar Teacher Camp on the USS Hornet. Is he um, already there waiting at the keynote podium? No, no, but you can bet he'll get there early. Um, what The only thing we're afraid of is the uh, Q McCall Honey Badger will be there also so there could be a bit of a puppet rumble but what they don't know Wait. is that waka has his own badger buddy but but how does waka get into a rumble if he doesn't have any hands or ears there's a lot of headbutting involved <laughs> got it got it um lots of good stuff happening this week over at teacher cast i'm recording two shows tomorrow one of them is with dig hyphen it which is dig it and uh the other one is with flocabulary so two good shows that are going to be popping out tomorrow and you can catch those and subscribe over at teachercast.net slash YouTube. And I recently looked over and we've got about uh, almost 50,000 views on, on our YouTube channel. So lots of good stuff over there. Check that out and please subscribe, teachercast.net slash YouTube. And of course you can subscribe to our audio channel at teachercast.net slash iTunes. So lots of good stuff. Sam, I want to say thank you so much for uh, sticking in tonight. And I know you were having some power issues earlier. But, uh, but thanks, man, for everything. Good show, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Uh, next week, we will be back live, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, uh, Pacific, and I believe uh, 1 o'clock uh, Hawaii time. Well, my friends, that wraps up another episode, the 21st episode of the Tech Educator Podcast. I want to thank again my guest, uh, my host, co-host here, Sam Patterson, for joining us today. Next week, we will be joined by John Samuelson and the newly married Jeff Herb. Um, to participate in our shows every week, you can, of course, leave a voice message at techeducatorpodcast.com slash voicemail. I love it when we get voicemails from that. You can email us at feedback at techeducatorpodcast.com. You can reach out to us on Twitter at techedshow. And, of course, you can use the hashtag tech educator we'll be back next week at sunday night seven o'clock we will have a great topic we will have some great co-hosts and until that time keep up the great work in your classrooms continue sharing your passions with your students and have a great summer we will see you next week and if you are on the line we're going to continue this hangout i know there's been some questions that uh, you have so give us about 30 seconds to run the credits and uh, we will be back and uh, we will continue the hangout for a little bit see you guys next week live on the tech educator podcast at techeducatorpodcast.com